Welcome to Electrified for the last episode of 2024. It's now official. Tesla's Mega Pack factory in Shanghai has completed construction just seven months after it began. Not only that, but the Mega Pactory has begun trial production and mass production is expected for quarter one, 2025. As we discussed back in May, the Shanghai Lingyang Economic Development Group was the first customer for Megapacks from this factory, a Chinese customer, but as we've talked about, most of the production is expected to go to the global market. We already talked about this more in depth last week, going over some of the expectations and the timeline for the production and what it will mean for Tesla's financials, so if you missed that one, go check it out. The TLDW, over the next two to three quarters, this factory should be the one that takes Tesla's energy division to over 10 gigawatt hours deployed per quarter and over $1 billion in profit per quarter. This video was shared of a Waymo vehicle colliding with one of these self-driving delivery little mini fridges. Shortly thereafter, there was a video shared of Tesla's FSD 13 in a similar situation, but it actually waited for the fridge to pass. Ashok shared that saying, knows to respect other robots equally. To give credit where it's due, the video of Tesla's version 13 in this scenario was from Andrew Petrella on X. All I wanted to add to this one is that, you know, maybe LiDAR is not the panacea that so many analysts still seem to think that it is. Rex shared a clip of version 13.2.2 on hurry mode, and listen, I watch an unhealthy amount of FSD videos. I'm not sure I've ever seen anything quite like this. I'm just going to narrate this real quick. So FSD seems to think that there's an extra lane over here to the right. There really isn't, but it goes up and maybe thinks it can't make it all the way to the light. So decides to take a detour through this parking lot, which is also a drive-through. We'll speed up this part. And then after this quick detour, it decides to take a left out of this parking lot and get back on the road, rolling this stop sign just like a human would. Now, I'm not necessarily advocating for this as good behavior, but it's most certainly human-like. Then we have FSD version 13.2.2 from Scott on X pulling into his driveway, but not only that, it pulls into his garage as well. Now to be clear, this feature is not working perfectly for everyone, but when you see it work well, it's tough not to share. And one more clip that I found to be incredibly impressive, and it's from an account that is not widely followed, so you may not have seen this one. So FSD really showing off in that clip using reverse and then navigating around to the right to give that car room to go and then proceeding through. Well done in my opinion. Look, we had uh, probably one of the preeminent AI labs when I left Uber. You guys know how I rolled when I was doing Uber. Like we'd probably be doing some pretty interesting stuff on that front. I mean, sort of in a more practical, on, a, on the more practical side, like uh, we were starting to roll out, I mean, of course, we're doing the autonomy thing. I'll, I'll put that aside. I, I think uh, Elon's going to take care of that at this point. That was Uber's former CEO about one month ago, basically just relying on Elon and Tesla to solve autonomy. Then more recently, Pierre Farragut was highlighting how 13.2.2 was driving him around with literally no interventions. And he said, I believe the AI inflection is now. 2025 will be year zero of the AI era. Hardware 3 owners can now rejoice as FSD version 12.6, which could be thought of as a mini version 13, is now rolling out to select customers. It's software update 2024.45.25.10.
It has end-to-end -end on the highway, improved city streets behavior, which reduces false slowdowns and improves obstacle avoidance. It does have speed profiles, earlier and more natural lane change decisions, the redesigned controller and the max speed update where autopilot determines the suitable speed limit within your allowed limit. On the release, Ashok said, pulled in a few important improvements from version 13 into this 12.6 release for AI3, initially rolling out to SNX customers, other platforms should be within a week. So I just want everybody to sit with this for a few seconds. At the beginning of 2024, all Tesla customers were still on FSD version 11. So throughout the course of this year, we got version 12 and the end to end, and now we're of course onto version 13. Hopefully for most of you, that does really mean something because you've been around and watching closely when version 11 was out, which again is part of why I like covering the daily news flow because over time you can pick up on those changes and realize why they're so important. You can actually see the pace of progress. And that's part Part of why Elon responded to Danny as she was saying, how can you call yourself a tech influencer and not recognize how advanced Tesla software is? To which Elon said, the brutal reality of the situation will hit like a tsunami towards the end of next year. Many of us have been waiting years for this unsupervised moment for FSD and all of the data points are aligning. It's looking like at some point next year, it's finally going to be the year. Also, when it comes to Elon's new name on X, Kekius Maximus, so Kek or K-E-K -E is essentially a translation of LOL. If you wanna know World of Warcraft, when players would type in LOL in the chat, due to the game's language translation mechanics, it would translate that to KEK. -E so over time, it just became an effective replacement for LOL. But Keck doesn't actually stand for anything like LOL does. And then Maximus from the movie Gladiator, and we know Elon loves history, and in this sense, it's kind of like engaging in battles, in this case, internet culture and memes. And his new PFP is Pepe the Frog in some battle attire playing video games. The simplest explanation is it's Elon's way of having fun and engaging in battle with internet culture. If your experience has been like mine, you have people constantly asking you how your Tesla handles the snow. Here's another data point from Tesla. All vehicles will automatically gauge the friction of the surface you're driving on and optimize for best control. Kekius, I mean, Elon said nothing beats an electric motor for extreme precision. Airwave Dynamics on YouTube shared a new video of the exit for the new Cybertruck boring tunnel at Giga Texas. Speaking of the Cybertruck, Tesla has once again denied that the Cybertruck will be brought to China, as many of those rumors were suggesting. At least for now, a Tesla China source said it was false information and that there is no such plan for January 1st. However, the truth of the situation is that Tesla is likely to deny these rumors all the way up to the point in which the Cybertruck is actually ready to be launched in the Chinese market if and when that happens, so as to not Osborne any other sales. As we've covered, there are some data points out there that would lead us to believe Tesla may be up to something working on getting the Cybertruck ready for China, but for me at this point, I'm not expecting it anytime soon. Here's a fun fact for you. 95% of your serotonin, which is key for regulating your mood, and 70% of your immune system is found in the gut. As we all look to 2025, I hope you all have something to get excited about. It doesn't have to be wellness related, although I am a big proponent of challenging yourself physically as it'll lead to mental benefits you didn't even consider. Now, if you've been around, you know I've had a pretty tumultuous couple years physically with a herniated disc and a parasite that wreaked havoc on my gut and immune system. But I also know we all have hurdles in life and a big part of who we become is how we deal with them. 
you can get discouraged and frustrated and feel behind and accept mediocrity, or you can view them as part of your story that one day may help to inspire others. As I've been saying, just stay tuned for 2025. And it is a fact, I have my family taking AG1 the sponsor of this episode. My sister, my brother-in-law, and my wife have been green-pilled, if you will, and they love it as part of their daily routine. For me, I like to sip mine throughout the day so I have a constant intake of these seven 75 vitamins, minerals, and probiotics with every serving. The B vitamins in AG1 do help to support my energy through the afternoon lull without needing caffeine because that does mess with my sleep at night if I drink it too late in the day. But as I always say, AG1 is just something you have to try for yourself. We all react differently. And even if you don't feel something after a few months, that does not mean that your body processes are not working better. AG1 is still offering that limited edition gift in addition to the welcome kit. So if you'd like to support the channel, you can head to drinkag1.com slash electrified to check it out, or you can use the QR code on the screen. As always, to everybody who tries out these sponsors, I cannot thank you enough. It is true. This channel would not exist if you guys weren't so supportive. The weekly Tesla China number came in for the last full week of the quarter and the year at 17,600. Compared to the same week in quarter three, that number was 22,600. Thus, quarter over quarter, Tesla China is now up 7.7%. The previous record for a quarter for Tesla China domestically was quarter three of this year at 181,500. And given that we're now over 194,900, clearly we have set a new record. Week 13 in quarter four last year came in at 15,800. So year over year, quarter four was up 13%. Then zooming out, looking at the year to date figure for Tesla China domestically, it ended up 7.56% on the year. Now, yes, technically there are two days left, but remember these numbers are rounded to begin with. So we have to allow some room for error with all of these numbers. But for 2023, this figure came in at over 609,700, whereas this year we're over 655,900. But as we've talked about year over year, Tesla is likely to be roughly flat no matter how quarter four deliveries come in. Just remember this Thursday, the second Tesla is likely to release the Q4 delivery numbers sometime in the morning. Historically, that's been around 9 a.m. and Tesla would need roughly 515,000 deliveries to have positive year over year delivery growth. On that front, Joe Tetmeyer was talking about production right now at Giga Texas. He said, not only does it appear there won't be production at least until late this week, but there were zero new Model Ys anywhere to be seen in all the usual places, the entire Model Y inventory at the factory is gone. So naturally, when you have that paired with this chart of Tesla's inventory data, which we have to take with a grain of salt, but looking at the directional trends, it's very clear that as of December, all of Tesla's inventory has been on a steep decline. I bring this up because plenty of people are saying this definitely means that Juniper production is going global as soon as quarter one next year. The argument goes that Tesla is doing everything it can to clear out its old Model Y inventory to make room for the new model which yes, on the surface makes sense, but I'm not sure that's a valid conclusion because all of the other models have seen the same decline as well. All I'm trying to say is the explanation could be as simple as Tesla trying to close out the quarter strong across all of its lineup. But then squarely in the rumor category, Chris Zhang said, based on order volume from door panel suppliers, the production capacity of the new Model Y at Shanghai will surge to 2,400 units per day starting January 1st. First. Just so you know, this number would roughly be on par with the outgoing model volume at full capacity. That's not how the Model 3 changeover worked. They slowly ramped back up the production volume. But you could also argue that in China, Tesla has already refreshed parts of the Model Y over there with things like the interior lighting. But all that matters for now, it looks like the new Model Y will be revealed in China in quarter one, and then hopefully in the United States and globally sometime in the second half of next year. 
here. It could potentially be sooner in the US, I'm just keeping my expectations very low. Ash Regan, a member of the Scottish Parliament, has been writing Elon to encourage him to build a factory in Scotland. Elon quickly threw cold water on that idea, saying very few companies will be willing to invest in the UK with the current administration. We won't cover all of these, so this is more of a PSA. Just know that Tesla does periodically update the owner's manual with the latest features. With the holiday update, Tesla has added new instructions indicating the inside of the windshield within the front camera enclosure must be cleaned periodically. Tesla now advises users to schedule cleaning service if it's needed by checking the new maintenance section under vehicle controls, service, and maintenance. Just know you can do that yourself if you're so inclined, but I'll have this article linked below with some other changes. In case you missed it, Tesla is now offering free lifetime supercharging if you buy a new Cybertruck Foundation series. This scary image was shared on Facebook. They said, got in a terrible accident today in my Model Y with my husband and both kids in the car. A massive SUV literally landed on top of us. We're thankful to be alive. The firefighters and police all said if we were in any other car but a Tesla, we would not have made it. If you ask me, that's a great screenshot to share with your family and friends. Robert Scoble, who's been in the tech industry for decades, said he was talking with an exec at a major US car maker earlier last night. He said he's despondent. He knows his company is in trouble because transportation is about to radically change due to autonomy. And he can't figure out how to save it because his bosses are not willing to listen for many reasons. Robert said, I told him we could save his company, but he would have to convince the committee above him to work with Elon and show up with a bag of billions, to which the executive said, impossible. Well, you know what they say about pride. You're going to go out five years from now and you're going to talk to someone and be like, it's crazy where things are today. Yeah. Have, could you have seen it five years ago? No. I get, and, and I think autonomous is an example of where there's going. And it's my other view, like, look, come out of Robotax today, it's a good example. I'm there, a lot of people maybe on the broadcast are there. Institutionally, next day, disaster, lack of detail, disappointment. Right away, I came out, I'm like, dude, this is top three day I've ever been to in 25 years, thousands of events. Right. Because it comes down to like a lot of the institutional in the spreadsheet, wearing the fleece, no sleeve, they can't see it. They don't, it's not in front of them. It's not spoon fed to them. You see where it goes. And I'll, and that's my view of like where Tesla is heading. Deliveries is 10% of the story now. Nice to see Dan Ives calling out the spreadsheet warriors that still are failing to see the future we're rapidly headed towards. As I currently record, Tesla stock is at about $407, down about 2.4% on the day, while the NASDAQ is down roughly 1%. As we zoom out though and look at 2024 as a whole, it's been quite the roller coaster. We began the year at roughly $250 a share. By April, we were down in the 130s. By July, we were back in the green for the year, trading in the 260s. In August, we had one more mega dip taking us back down in the 180s. And with where we sit now, over $400 per share year to date, Tesla stock is up over 69%. As we close out 2024, I just wanna take a quick second to sincerely thank you all for being here day after day. I know everyone's time is precious. There's so much incredible content on the internet, especially in the Tesla circle. I'll certainly do my best to continue being valuable, and as I've been saying the past few months, 2025 really is shaping up to be the year. Who knows what the stock will do, but for Tesla the company, this could be a very special year, so hopefully you all stick around for 2025 and beyond. Ashley and I wish you all many blessings heading into 2025. Hope you have a wonderful and a safe new year, and I should be back uploading as of Thursday. Don't forget, if you're interested, check out AG1 linked below. Grab that limited time gift that they're offering for the holidays. Hope you have a wonderful day. Please like the video. If you did, you can find me on X linked below and a huge thank you to all of my Patreon supporters.